I'm going to share with you now my trades and how I've 6 x the market over the period of October since I've been gone. I'm going to share with you now what I traded, how I did it. 19 trades, 19 wins, and I 6 x the S&P 500. Would you like me to get straight into it? Okay, so tap the like button if you wouldn't mind and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. We've got red, white and blue, of course, today because the uh, US elections tomorrow. Join us for that. So I've been gone throughout, the, throughout October and I'm going to run a poll here uh, on, um, on, I'm going to give a link in the description and I think I'll run the poll on X and you can go and vote. Should I continue trading live on the show? Uh, I've been very successful, 19 trades, 19 wins. And I've always said, well, at least for the last year and a half, we moved away from live trading uh, to be to provide uh, a service that was impartial, completely uh, unbiased, uh, didn't have any skin in the game, if you like, but I have been trading. However, very uh, limited trades, <clears throat> 19 trades, but all with pretty much one or two stocks. Um, I'd like your thoughts. Would you like me to continue doing that? Or do you think I should go back to not trading? My, my, my priority is you, the viewer, providing the best service, not me making money. Money takes care of itself. I provide value. I will make money by providing value. I don't need to trade. But I was, I was on holiday and I got bored and I wanted to trade. And I, because I was doing it off air, I wasn't influencing the stock as if I could anyway. But some people think I could influence the SNP, which is kind of funny. But there you go. Uh, I was doing it because I knew I could make money and I wasn't really uh, brought, I wasn't broadcasting it on YouTube. I was just telling you my trades on X uh, so you could follow them. But uh, I wasn't really trying to, you know, promote it in any way. Not that it would make a difference, but we just want to be clear about that. So what did I do and how have I <clears throat> beaten the market by six times? Well, first of all, if you're going to trade, you've got to know how to trade. I only, and I repeat, I only buy companies I can own forever. Do not own company. I do not trade companies that I uh, that I'm just in and out of, or it's gambling, or uh, you know, there's no fundamental reason or value. So I only own what I can keep forever. However, if I'm trading it, that's not my intention. But if I'm stuck with it, I don't mind. So I don't buy rubbish. I only buy stocks I could own forever, and uh, I don't use tr uh, charts to trade either, even though I understand them and enjoy watching Sensei's shows on Sunday uh, for all the chart details. That's not what I do. I understand charts very well. Thank you very much. But that's not how I trade. I trade on fundamentals, macro conditions, news, greed of other people, how they will buy and sell, manipulate news on the election, and so on and so forth. So let's be clear. When I trade, I do it with companies I can own. I don't mind what I pay for them because they are of, of, of great value going forward. I feel good when I sell them because people are buying great businesses, not junk and rubbish, just so I can benefit from it. That's not how I look at things. Uh, and uh, I bought them because they were oversold due to a macro condition, whether it be McDonald's E. coli breakout, whether it be uh, misinformation on Coca-Cola and a massive sell-off, uh, wars breaking out, Donald Trump saying something that's move the market, whatever it might be, US elections coming up, whatever it might be, that presents opportunity. There's always opportunity to make money. So that being said, now you know <coughs> my basic fundamental principle, let me share with you what I did and show you the results. So very important, do not, and I, and I did not once at all, trade on the S&P 500. Sorry, I scrubbed that. I didn't trade on my brokerage account. What you're looking at now. Now, I've just had first-hand experience of this, first-hand, because I've just recently, uh, while I was on holiday, uh, I cashed in a pension that I'd been paying. Um, I started paying when I was 18 years of age. I'm 55 now. And it was only it was only five thousand pounds, which has gone into my UK account to pay the bills in England, because um, I paid it for a couple of years and then stopped doing it. It was a waste of time. But uh, now I'm of retirement age, fifty five. At least that was the time I set it for. I was able to cash it in. So I had 
a pension in the UK only for a couple of years, £5,000 thereabouts. In fact, it was 6800 exactly. Um, and I hadn't paid, I hadn't earned any money in England for years. So technically, you could say I'm, I'm, a, I'm a non-taxpayer. I pay my tax in the UK, in the US. However, I cashed it in. So that, that's just like my brokerage account, right? I paid 25%. 6800 went down to 5400 So there's a real-life expi- uh, real example of why you don't trade in your brokerage account if you're a long-term investor. You hold and you never sell. You just keep accumulating uh, and so on. You trade in your IRA or your ISA in England, individual savings account, or your IRA in the US. So I didn't... S- didn't sell a single share at all in my main brokerage account. Okay. But what I did do is I did buy the SNP. I bought 10 more shares with margin because margin is about to get cheaper. Tomorrow it'll come even cheaper. And I uh, bought some more SNP. So let me show, share with you what I did. So you can see here, there was that big drip, uh, big dip uh, just there. You, 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 sh- I'm sharing it there. Look, see that? This big drop here. Now, that big drop, uh, in my opinion, was an overreaction uh, to earnings. Uh, it was Google, which had a great earnings. Uh, there were other earnings as well, uh, uh, other great earnings. But there was some misinformation and there was some overselling because of the US election, because we'd overheated, because everything's overbought anyway, and a, a host of other reasons. I'm not going to go into all the reasons why it was oversold, but there were many, many reasons why we had this. And for me, uh, it was an opportunity to buy that dip. So I bought 10 more shares, five and a half thousand dollars on margin of the SNP. So that's great, right? Now, rates are going to get cheaper for me tomorrow. So I'm okay with that. I'd already paid off about $10,000 over the last few months. I've been reducing, I've not been buying anything on the SP now for, for months. So I've reduced it, brought it back into balance. Uh, and if I show you my buying power, uh, you can see uh, I'm 54%. Uh, so anywhere above 54, 50% buffer. Uh, on margin is absolutely fine, especially if it's just the S&P 500, you are very, very safe. So I bought some more, I spent some more money. So that's all I've done is I bought more of the S&P on my brokerage account with that dip. Great. Fantastic. So if we look at it over the month, I am up on the S&P 0.06, which is double because of margin. Okay, so actually, we're now at 0.01, whatever we are. Okay, we're moving around, of course, right? So uh, it would be less than that without margin. So this is amplified gains. So just to make it simple, a few moments ago, it was up 0.06. So really, my overall portfolio would be up 0.03. So I've outperformed the market by being in margin. I'm not down. Someone just said they're having a really bad month. They're down. I'm not down. I bought the dip. I'm fine. I am flat. And that is with margin. So margin amplifies the gains and amplifies the losses. So if it was, if I was in a, if I had a bad portfolio, I would be down double. I'm not. I'm flat. In fact, I was up a few moments ago. So that's, that's great. Okay. So how does that compare to my Roth where I've been trading? where I've been trading. Well, let me share with you. One month on the on the brokerage account, one month, one month on my Roth. Three. Three. So that is three times what, uh, what the S&P has delivered. Bearing in mind, the S&P on my brokerage is doubled because of margin. So I'm six times up from the S&P. I have beaten the market six times, 6x the market, because as you can see, I'm up 3% on the month on my IRA, on my Roth, uh, my Roth IRA, and uh, we're flat right now. But as I said before, uh, it's, it's doubled because of margin. So I'm actually six times I have beaten 6x of the market. I think you'll agree. That's fantastic. Uh, Warren Buffett, eat your heart out. All right. Best trader in the world, obviously, right? Okay. Now, I've traded multiple times. I've done 19 trades and I've won 19 times. 
Uh, I've won every single trade. I never, ever lose money, and I never, ever lose on a trade. Right now, on Coca-Cola, I am down. I'll share with you, I'll share with you, I'm down 2.42. So if I sold now, my 20th trade, I would lose money. Not going to sell. We're, we're about to come up to the ex-dividend date, uh, which will give me about 200 bucks in Coca-Cola. Uh, and I'm expecting, I, in fact, I hope, I hope it stays this low uh, until January the 1st, when I'll add $8,000 into, into my Roth, because that's when the new year starts, and buy $8,000 of Coca-Cola with a further 2.4% discount. It's oversold. It's oversold. The information on the uh, on the earnings was confused. It confused people. Um, it's actually looking very, very good going forward. The growth is good. The dividend is great. Continually growing. It's a dividend king. So I don't actually mind if I don't get back in on the S&P. And remember, whenever I trade, I just simply buy back the S&P. And I want to... Um, cover that point. Why I'm up six times the market is because is because not only did I win every single trade, I made money on the trade, but also bought back the S&P at a lower price. So I gained more and more shares of the S&P. You may remember when I went into the holiday, I think I had 50 shares of the S&P. And when I last sold, I had 54 and a half, four, four shares, four and a half shares of the S&P for free, tax free, to, uh, to, which is what I gained to buy these stocks. And I will eventually buy back in the S&P. Now the S&P, if it takes me a few months to get back my profit from Coca-Cola, I may pay more, but I will still make sure that I actually overall benefit from that trade. Uh, it doesn't matter that I'm paying more for the stock because stocks always rise. Doesn't matter. When I bought last week, those 10 shares of the S&P, that was more than I paid two years ago, year ago, obviously. Doesn't matter though. As long as what you're buying is going to be worth more in the future, doesn't matter if it's more than it was a year ago. And if that's the case, you'd never buy another stock, would you? You just stop buying stocks. So that's the trades. That's the results. You can see it there in front of you. Now, I traded the S&P several times. Uh, I traded McDonald's several times on the E. coli scare. That was ridiculous. Uh, it was um, um, uh, institutions and the owners of, of McDonald's sold it just before the news came out because they knew it would go down. So they, they sold it and they bought it back. I traded it, I think, three times and I made like four or $500, nearly a share of the S&P. Each time I traded it tax-free and then bought it back lower no intention of staying in McDonald's. It's expensive. It's very expensive, as is Coca-Cola, 27 times earnings. However, uh, it did present me the opportunity to get in and get out and make some money. So there's my Roth IRA. You can see where we are today, up today, and there is the S&P. Uh, 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 if I go back to the day, we are just up again now. So overall, uh, I've now grown a portfolio from $5,000 to 123561 now, during October, um, I, I earned some money. As I always tell you how much I earn, I earned about $1,000, just I think about $1,100 in October, uh, which I will get paid on November the 21st. Thanks to all of you that were members of the channel uh, and watching the videos and the ad, and the ad revenue and so on, uh, which is uh, about a third of what I normally earn now. Um, so I'm very grateful that I earned something. Um, I'm hoping this month will, my income will go up again, but, uh, that was great to be self-employed to earn a thousand, 1100 bucks, uh, for basically doing nothing really. So I was very grateful of that. So there's my portfolio. That's how I've been trading. That's why I've been trading uh, and so on. Now, when this video comes out, I'm running a poll on X. Do you think I should carry on trading? Um, I did 19 trades, 19 wins. I've 6 x the market. I only buy stocks that um, I can own forever, like now Coca-Cola. I never lose. Uh, I will never lose. Uh, micro trades, one of you, I was following somebody, I forgot the name now, but one of you uh, was doing it on 
Discord uh, and was making lots of lots of micro trades, making a dollar here, dollar there, ten dollars here, fifty bucks there. Absolutely brilliant. It's not about it's not about how much you make. It's about you always make. And I want to leave you with this. Um, <clears throat> trading for me, I have a very unique perspective. I think um, I'm focusing on not losing. The focus is trading to not lose, not to win. If you're trading with the objective of winning, you're chasing. Some of you, I think it was Fight Channel, said I was chasing the stock. I wasn't chasing at all. <clears throat> I won every single trade and was very happy and calm and relaxed about it. I'm not trading to win. I'm trading to not lose. By, by trading in my Roth, I uh, omitted losses I would have had on the S&P. The S&P dropped. I was out of it on my Roth, buying back the S&P, buying uh, McDonald's, buying Coca-Cola. I also did Enphase Energy, by the way, and made about 8% on en Enphase. Forgot that one. Did that did that twice. So, what I was actually doing was not actually trying to make money. I was trying to not lose money. The focus was don't lose money. If you never lose money, <coughs> and I don't ever, you always make money. Because the stocks are going to grow in, at the very least in line with inflation. That's how you protect yourself by being an investor as opposed to holding cash in the bank. Stocks will go up even if the businesses don't grow because they just go up in, with inflation anyway. So you're always making money on, on paper, if you like, and the dividends and so on and so forth. So if you're focusing on not losing money and recognizing a macro condition, macro, noticing a dip, getting out and buying back as long as it's tax-free, then that's great. Not on the main account, I don't do that because if I sold now, I've made a small fortune over the last, uh, was it, is it one year? Up 25%. I was up over 32%. It's because of the recent dip because uh, of the election and the, uh, whatever. That'll be up again in December. 19 grand. I made 19 grand in a year. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd pay a bloody fortune, wouldn't I? I'd pay about $4,000 uh, $4, in tax. Well, that's bloody ridiculous. What do I want to do that for? I don't mind if it goes down. I just bought more. So the focus is not how to be greedy and how to make more money. It's how to protect your money and not lose. If you focus on not losing, you always win. You always win because inflation means you're going to win regardless. Dividends mean you're going to win regardless. If every single penny is working for you, is invested, is not sat in the bank, is working for you, and you're not losing money, you're making money. So when I sold, I recognized, remember, five moves ahead, I want to sell the S&P and my Roth. It's going to go down. It did. I want to buy a McDonald's. It's going to go down. It did because of uh, E. coli. I want to buy Enphase Energy because the earnings disappointed. I want to buy that. I want to buy Coca-Cola misinformation because of uh, 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 the, the way it was presented. So I, that, I had all those moves already ahead, knowing that the last move will be back in to the S&P. Now, if it takes me two quarters... To get back in the S&P, so be it, on the Roth only, so be it. Remember, most of my money is in the s and is, is 170 grand, is, is, in, is, in the s is in the brokerage if you include the margin, all right, which you have to do. Um, so, you know, most of my, 90% of my money is in, is, is in the S&P anyway. It's only 10% of it, it's like a small amount on, on, the, on the IRA, but that's growing quicker, right, by the day. If it takes me two quarters, so be it. I'll earn 250 bucks this quarter and I'll earn another 250 bucks the next quarter, 500. I'll be about breaking even by that point. I think the S&P next year is going to go sideways anyway. I might keep it for a third quarter. Now I'm making profit on dividends alone. But then the profit of, the, of, uh, uh, of um, Coca-Cola will uh, exceed the S&P in my opinion because we've had our run on the S&P 
But just in case we, there's more, I'm in the S&P on my main account. I think there's more growth potential in, in, in Coca-Cola as a defensive as we go into next year. That's why I'm, I'm now in that one as my final trade at the moment. So thanks for watching to the end of this video. I hope you've tapped the like button. I'm going to ask answer, answer a few questions that were presented through the making of it. I'm going to put a poll on X. Perhaps you'd like you might like to vote. The link will be above my head and down below in the description. Should I continue trading? Remember, uh, the reason why I stop is because I want to be the most honest, real life channel on YouTube TV and not promote stocks and not pump stocks. However, that's for people who don't know what they're talking about. Of course, I can't promote and pump a stock anyway. I'm not big enough for that. Uh, Meet Kevin can't do it and he's got only 4 million subscribers. But people think you can. And I just want to make sure that everyone knows where we are. Um, however, I'm only trading the S&P and I only bought stocks I can own forever. Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and, and so on, uh, end phase. Uh, and I was only in one trade at a time. I was also all in 100%. Uh, I wasn't like 20 little trades messing around over here. and I wasn't gambling. I wasn't doing Donald Trump stock. I wasn't doing anything like that. Uh, when I bought, I bought all in, $28,000 trades. By the end of next year, I if, if I am trading and you and you say I, I should via the poll, I will be doing $100,000 trades. $100,000 the S&P, $100,000 of Coca-Cola, $100,000 of Google. <coughs> all in. Not messing around. Not a bit of that and a bit of that. All in. Straightforward, simple, and so on and so forth. Go with conviction or not at all. All right, so please let me know what you think. Now, before I give you the links and end the video, let me read the comments uh, that I got here. Uh, let me see what I did uh, get here for, for the making of this. I like the uh, I like the trading. I followed the one on end phase and took a little profit. Congratulations, Wade, and I did see you over on Discord. Thank you very much indeed, uh, and congratulations. You should do more trading, perhaps some zero day options too. Not interested in options. Options is gambling, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, 19 trades, 19 wins uh, is pretty good, isn't it? Um, so maybe I should be a trader. I don't know. You can decide. Very difficult to trade while doing a, a day job too. If you can sit there all day and trade, it's yes. That's another thing. And I want to thank Sensei for pointing that out in his live show. He said, he said Martin sacrifices trading to present the show. Absolutely true. Trading, when I was trading, I, was, I wasn't I was talking, I wasn't running the screens, running the cameras, I wasn't think, 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 keep it pacey, keep it entertaining, keep it going, look at the camera, microphone sound. I was sat there in silence going, I was just reading, the, I was reading the newspaper, I was reading news, I was reading analysis, then I traded. Different, but I'm sure... Like everything, I could rise to the challenge and do it. I'm sure I could. So if you if you if the poll says do it, then maybe I will. 89 likes now. Watching this making of a live video. Please uh, get us to 100 if you can. Uh, on X dividend date, doesn't the share price fall by the dividend per share? No, it doesn't. Um, Fight Channel once said that it, it it doesn't actually. It doesn't really work like that. Uh, it it doesn't work like that at all. Um, People often say that it, it, it doesn't work like that uh, and it soon comes back anyway. Uh, it, it, no, <laughs> if it worked like that, think about it. The stock would go to zero, wouldn't it? If every time we got a, a dividend payout, it went down by that amount. And, and remember, um, Coca-Cola is not a def is a defensive stock. It's not a high growth stock. It's a dividend paying stock. If it, that was the case, you'd just you, you, you'd eventually end at zero, wouldn't you? So no. Uh, so in theory, it's a non-event, including the dividend. No, not in my mind. It's not. Not at all. And of course, it's taxed differently as well. So it's, it, it, again, doesn't matter on your IRA. I appreciate it. I bought Coca-Cola at 65 and will buy some more at 64 and 64. Yeah, great. I'll be buying more. Again, I'm not looking at a chart. I'm not, I'm not interested. The thing is, if you look at a chart, you're looking at the position that everybody else is going to buy as well. You're looking at the position that everyone's going to sell as well. Right? Not interested in that. I'm interested in listening to what the CEO is doing. I'm interested in the numbers. I'm interested in the news. I'm interested in who sold, why they sold. I don't really care where I buy. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm not buying a share. I'm buying a business. 
and the business will make money and the business will return a profit. Don't really care the price I pay. Uh, I don't look at it like that. I bought it at 71. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't worry about that. It doesn't, it's all about time. It's all about the time it takes to get the money back, but you will. Bruv, I've missed you. So glad this is back. Uh, TJ Molden, thank you for your support. Thank you for re re remaining a member while I've been gone. But it's Coke. It'll come back. It certainly will. But it's not just Coke. Do not be confused. Coca-Cola is a bottling company. It doesn't just do it doesn't do Coke, just do Coke, it does tea, it does distribution, it does bottling, it does many, many things. Coca-Cola is not the only thing it does. It also does some snacks. Just bought Pfizer. Congratulations to you. Another good one. TPL holding for a month already up by 30%. Texas uh, Pacific Land, awesome. Awesome. One of the best businesses you can own. Totally agree. Good luck to everyone this week. It'll be a it'll be a lot of ups and downs this week. It certainly will be. I just do the S and P five hundred up three x on the ETF. Uh, people buy when uh, dividend pays, so if more, it won't go down as much as dividend. Correct. If it didn't fall, Martin, that would be the benefit of buying on ex-dividend date as you don't qualify for the dividend. If it didn't fall, Martin, what would be what would be the benefit of buying on ex-dividend date? as you don't qualify. They've been, uh, they're, they're been, well, you're buying because of the growth of where the stock's going to be next quarter, right? That's what I'd be doing anyway. Uh, I also got Coca-Cola at 65. When you get a dividend, the price does drop on X dividend dates. Well, I'm not going to disagree with Fight Channel. That's his opinion. And he is without doubt the dividend king. Uh, he does many, many trades on dividends. He's all his portfolio is full of dividend stocks. He has far greater experience when it comes to dividends than I do. No question about it. However, I don't care if the stock drops. I don't care where it is today. I'm buying the business, not the stock price. The dividend is, is, a, is an income. It comes in, allows me to buy more. That's all I care about. I don't care whether the price drops, stays the same, goes up. Doesn't matter long term anyway. Makes no difference at all. Yeah, it must drop because that portion of the market cap is being paid out as a dividend. So the share price will drop by that amount. No, that is not correct. The, pr the value of the business is not the value of the stock price, the market cap. The market cap and the stock price is merely the price the business is trading today at that given moment. That is not the value of the business. The value of the business is the intrinsic valuation based upon its income, its debts, its growth, it's forecast, it's profit, it's loss, yada, yada, yada. Many stocks are, over, uh, are overpriced or, under, or, or undervalued. That, to me, is not the way to buy a business. I look at the value of the business. The share price is merely the entry and exit point. I can trade it. Do not be, uh, do not be uh, all focusing on the stock price. Focus on the valuation of the business. And the valuation... Is not just the mark is not just the market cap. That is purely the trading valuation on the day. Okay, so there we go. I've got through the questions. That was my um, how I've six x the the market while I've been gone. I'm going to leave the poll on X. Click above my head for all the links. So the poll uh, on X. Um, further uh, videos I'll put up here as well. Down below in the description, I'll, put, I'll post the link to uh, the FOMC report, um, the election tomorrow, uh, other things you might find interesting as well as the poll. Over here, I shall put, uh, I think I can put the link actually to the poll and I'll also put uh, the election uh, as well. I'll put the election down here. Go and check out. We're, we're live all day with an election special. There you go. What do you think? Did I do well? Of course I did. I six x never lost a penny, made lots of money and uh, the rest is history now. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.